Hey, you guys. Hi there, it's Sonia Morgan. Hello, everyone. It's Jen Shaw from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Hey, guys, it's Emily from The Real Housewives of Orange County. It's the Marge. I'm dialing in. Hey, everybody. Ebony K. Williams here, newbie. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. It's Brandy Redmond from Dallas. What's up? It's Heather Gay from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. 25,000, in case you didn't recognize me. Hi, guys. Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. Tell you how I'm doing. Not well, bitch. That's the holy whore. Jealous of what? Your ugly leather pants? Should I bow to you? Okay. Tornado, spin the truth, destroy. Hello, everybody, true. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beret Hills, and guys, I have a special surprise for you today. As you may or may not know, today is the one year anniversary for my YouTube channel, guys. Can you believe it? It has been already one year. My God, applause, applause, applause. I never thought that I will be here one year after, and I'm incredibly grateful for every single one of you. Guys, what better way to celebrate this milestone than having my very first interview with the one and only Ronald Richards. If you don't know who Ronald Richards is, I mean, he is, the lawyer, you know, that has been behind this whole Erica Jane and Tom uh, Girardi situation. And if you don't know who he is by now, I mean, come on, you need to go and do your homework then, right? So having this interview, it has been one of the most eye-opening experiences of my life. As you know, we talk about everything that is going down all the time. And everything that we say is usually, you know, because of the documents that we read, you know, and uh, the proof and the receipts and the opinions. And, you know, as bloggers, we create our own opinions, you know, and that's, that's basically what we do. But we are not right there in the middle of everything. So talking to someone who not only has the knowledge, but it's also right there you know, fighting the fight and breaking everything down for us, it really changed my perspective on many, many things on this case. I'm not going to be doing any more talking. I'm going to let him to take the floor and basically explain a lot of things to us. And But I think this is one hell of interview, honestly. Now, guys, I'm going to be reading all of your comments. So before we start, do not forget to like this video, okay? And leave all of your comments on the live chat. I'm gonna be trying to answer as much as I can. And if you didn't catch this live, don't worry, you can still leave all of your comments on the comment section. I will also be looking at them and trying to respond as much as I can. And after you're done, do not forget to share this video on all of your social media so we can put the word out there. Okay, guys, so this is it. I hope you enjoy it. Have an amazing time. And here is the interview. See ya. Bye. Yes. Hello, Ronald. Good morning. How are you? Good morning to you, Andy. How are you? I'm great. I mean, honestly, I think it's an honor to have you here today. I have been wanted to ask you so many questions for so long. So <laughs> it's great to have you here. I'm happy to be here. I enjoy your coverage. It's funny. It's clear for the audience and it's a delight to watch. It really is. Thank you. I mean, the thing is like, look, me personally, I have been a fan of the show for like literally since the beginning. So I, I, I view, I, I look at everything that is going on, like, you know, as a viewer, as a fan. And, um, I think that's why I'm, we are a little bit different here, you know, because we, you know, we enjoy these shows, but when something this big happened, it's like, okay, what, I mean, we, we need to know what is, what is going on. You know what I mean? I agree. I mean, there's, you know, millions of fans out there and just because there's a court case, we shouldn't silence the information or prevent them from hearing it. And mm -hmm. since I'm have a specialized skill set in acquiring information and I've, 
spent a lot of time putting it together. Why would we ever want to deprive the viewers and your fans of knowing the real tea? Exactly. I mean, I agree 100%. Um, let me ask you something. I mean, this is one question that I uh, I wanted to do to ask you for a very long time. Is like, why initially did you get interest on do on the whole Girardi case? Like before they appoint you to do uh, work with the trustee and stuff. Like why oh. it, it was so interesting to you? Well, that's such a great question. First of all, my t Twitter page has been around for over a decade. It, it, I, it didn't start with Girardi. I've covered all sorts of things. Over the last couple of years, I'd like to focus on crooked lawyers. So I started uh, exposing Michael Avenatti, uh, Girardi, and others. I won't go through the litany of crooked lawyers out there, but I basically wanted, I realized there was a void in the public understanding that a massive fraud was about to be exposed. And I wanted to help accelerate that, uh, conversation and those facts in the public forum. So I started pulling up court documents, depositions, legal positions that a trained eye would know don't make any sense. So mm -hmm. I wanted to call these people out early on um, and focus on this and start a dialogue. And then what I realized, a lot of people started writing me and covering it. And I felt like this is a void because most journalists don't have 27 years in litigation experience and don't haven't tried cases in juries, haven't won any judgments, haven't won any appeals, have no published decisions. They don't quite have the pedigree that I do. And I felt like it's time to donate that knowledge to the viewers and your fans and get people up to date. And then people like you break it down after I comment on it and break it down even further so for someone that's, you know, riding a bike at the gym or taking a walk, it's not so heavy. Where sometimes I'm a little heavy on the facts and on the law. So it takes all of us working together to get the facts out. I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, and I think that's very important because a lot of people were thinking that you just came out of nowhere and just decided to go after Erica Jane or the Girardis, but you know, the truth is that you have been there for a long time. This just happened to be one of the biggest case. You know, uh, I think Tom Girardi was what, one of the most famous lawyers in the lawyer world. So I yeah, think one that of the most. Absolutely. And uh, I I've been a practicing lawyer for 27 years. I mean, mm. let's get serious. I grew up in Beverly Hills. Uh, I'm licensed in multiple jurisdictions. I practice law over the United States. A member of the Supreme Court bar, other well-known bars. I mean, it's ironic that people would think that I made my career off of a Girardi case. I'm not doing this yeah. with publicity. <laughs> I already, I, I'm already. I could tell you this, Andy. If you and I walked up and down Cannon Drive in Beverly Hills, it would be impossible for someone not to walk up to me and say, "Hey, Ronald, can I talk to you about my case?" Or, "Hey, Ronald, good to see you." because I've lived there my entire life. It's not like I'm a stranger to the legal community. It's almost, I just laugh, because I'm never gonna tell people, hey, I'm a good experienced lawyer, because I don't talk about myself that way. But I think it is funny that people think I would actually waste my time to get well known on Twitter, that that's like yeah. a big thing in my life. I'm glad that people follow it, and I'm glad that you're reporting on it, but that's because I think the subject matter is important. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's like uh, it's like having a, fur, a fresh pair of eyes, but like thousands of them. And I think yeah. it will help also uh, a lot. Let me ask you also, like, why, why go online? Like, why go on Twitter or why, you know, go on, on, on interviews? You know, like, why are you deciding to do to take this route? Well, because the same reason why you do it. I don't like people filtering my message. You ask a question you get a direct answer. Uh, I've seen, unfortunately, lately, some YouTubers actually talk about me without even having me on the show. I mean, it's ridiculous. If you're going to talk about Ronald Richards, you better have him on your show and just ask me the questions. I yeah. like the Twitter platform because I have really smart followers that people don't know who they are. 
But I mean, all the people that I'm commenting about would be surprised how many people anonymously contact me on Twitter and they give me amazing tips that I utilize in what I'm doing. And so I'm not going to be two faced. Everybody on Twitter helped me get the information that I've utilized for this case and other cases. And I'm going to keep giving them the information uh, under any circumstances, whether I'm here or there. I, I don't have people control who I represent or what I say. I don't say anything that's untrue. I state the facts and nobody's going to intimidate me with threats or, uh, uh, you know, motions. None of that intimidates me. I'm here to tell the truth. I mean, I, look, I, I'm the first one to say, I think I said it in another video before that, you know, you never just talk to talk like every single thing that you post and you said you have always have like backup like legal backup you know documents uh receipts as we call them you know like it's the, everything is right there i mean you just never just post some random thing you know and 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 wait for a response like everything has an argument and um many people maybe who doesn't follow you or like who are on the other team uh, they they don't realize that that the, the, everything you said is actually backup with information with actual core documents or you know real receipts. That's right. I like to do that so people see that when I'm providing information, it's what we call sourced. I source mm -hmm. it. I don't just talk for the sake of hearing myself. Um, and if my positions are attacked, I defend them. And if people want to question me about them, all I ask is have me on one on one, ask me the questions. I'll always answer all of them. And you could either accept what I'm saying or not, but don't be uh, someone that just talks about me and I'm not there to defend myself. That I don't think is fair. Exactly. Um, okay. So let's move on a little bit into this whole Erica J situation. Um, my main question is because i know that the, there is a lot of thing going on i know that she has been named on some lawsuits um but is there like an actual case going on against erica jane or everything is just investigation uh right well now? that's a great question andy um usually you refer to it as the this mess not situation but we'll we, we'll talk about the mess of the situation um mm -hmm. that's no your, your vernacular on the show is Let's talk about this mess, which I always laugh. But <laughs> today we'll, 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 we'll be a little bit more formal. I call it a situation. How about we'll talk about the present legal proceedings? Basically, there's, a, there's an action that was filed against her to recover some of these lottery payments that were diverted to her by her, her husband um, that, were, that should go to the firm. That should be pretty non-controversial. And then we're uh, trying to recover whatever value she received from the $25 million plus receivable that's on the Girardi Keese bank account. I mean, uh, excuse me, tax returns. So uh, that doesn't mean she got 25 million, but certainly they told the IRS for the last four years of returns that she got owes them 25 million. So I'm just trying to clarify what it is. and. Erica Girardi should be really be happy that I'm on this case because I'll be the first one to go public and say she received nothing. She did nothing wrong. She received nothing of value. The case is over. I don't understand why she would want an attorney motivated by money, which people don't recognize. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars of my own money, hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal time. And guess what, Andy? I may receive nothing. It's all on a contingency. I may conclude truthfully that Erica was a victim of Thomas Girardi. That could be the case. I have no idea. I do know that her and Tom Girardi spent a lot of money. And I do know that that money probably came from a lender or from these victims. That I do know. I know that there's money that she's received that she'll probably have to return, in my opinion. But other than that, this is not personal. It's I completely agree with what you're saying. And that was that was going to be my next question because I feel that it will be so easy for Erica to just cooperate. You know, I have been saying this also like for a very long time. Like, why is she so adamant to say anything or to just be like, hey, 
I don't have anything to hide. Here's my financial information or here are the documents. And I'm hearing, I, I hear the other day that she is not cooperating, you know, but she herself said that, yes, I'm cooperating and doing everything. So my question is like, is she doing it? Is she cooperating with you or, or through her lawyers or whatever? Is she giving the information that it will be needed for to, to clear her name? I mean, I don't have enough information yet from her or her attorneys to do that. But I mean, if it, it's better than it was before, but we're a long way from over with. But I mean, Andy, honestly, it's not that complicated. If you have a dollar in your bank account presently, right now? Yeah. Okay. Did that dollar come from Girardi Keys? No. Okay, you're sure, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's not that hard when I say, how did you capitalize your accounts to show me where the money came from to get into the account? It's not that hard to do, but I'm still waiting. Um, she's spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers for her divorce attorney to represent him, to represent her in this divorce, to basically uh, represent her in this law in the in the bankruptcy case. And so I just want to know where's that money coming from? Is that being donated? Is that coming from other funds? So when you're spending a lot of money, uh, you need to investigate what's the source of that. So that's all I'm trying to do. If you think about it, you and I would be easily be able to show that we didn't receive any money from the Girardi Keys estate, right? Mm -hmm. I can just say, hey, they've never paid me. Here's how I get all my money. Here's the clients it's tied to. Here's my investments. I don't have any money from this estate. Game over. This is like, honestly, two weeks of disclosures. It's turned into, let's try to disqualify Ronald Richards. Let's attack him on Twitter. Let's do everything and anything to make this as difficult as possible, even though I get along great with her attorney and this makes no sense. So I can understand why I get along so well with her lawyer, but yet I have to deal with so much other collateral issues. I, I don't know if there's two sets of people giving them instructions, you know, the persons or people that are paying, Maybe she's upset. I can't figure it out, but I, I want to clear Erica Girardi, actually, because then she'll have to publicly say, this guy's pretty straight up, but I can't do that if I don't have all the information. That's the problem. Exactly. And why do you think that she's not collaborating? Like, what could be the reason? Well, I never like to speculate in people's minds, but I can tell you generally why people don't cooperate, not speculating is why Erica is not cooperating. Um, generally, people don't want to cooperate because some of the ways they've capitalized their accounts, they don't want being made public. Uh, they don't they don't want to see maybe maybe if someone else is holding their money, they won't be able to explain it. It'll look suspicious. Or if they have a friend or other people paying for them, those people don't want to get involved. So that's why. I know. I, I I mean it's just in my mind it's so crazy because like like we were saying it will be so easy to be just like here is everything just clear my name you know like I didn't do anything wrong like just prove it you know I mean it it, it is you're insane. right it's so easy if they came to you tomorrow and said hey Andy we think you're holding Girardi uh, Keys funds you would in ten seconds be able to prove you're not right I mean like literally one day of effort. And, um, and remember, I, I didn't pick her out of the blue. She's been doing for 20 years. She's on TV talking mm -hmm. about lawsuits that were settled. She's signing loan documents. It's not like I'm picking on her. She has her fingerprints on a lot of the stuff here. I think she, well, I mean, I, I don't want to talk too much about it like that way, but I think she's just, I don't know. I think she's upset. She has been saying so much and she never realized that everything that she said could be used against her right now. You know what I mean? That's um, right. Uh, and honestly, I think that's the main reason why everyone keeps saying that it looks like she knew what was going on. Because it is just too too weird, too shady from, from her side to not being able to just like, hey, look into my account. It looks like a guilty behavior at the end of the day. 
Um, let me ask you something. Erica has been trying to put out there for a very long time that um, the fact that you go online and that you do these interviews on, on your Twitter and all those things, it's like a conflict of interest and like it's unprofessional and blah, blah, blah. And that's why uh, she goes so hard against you and, and she wants to remove you from her case. Um, what do you think about that? It, it, it does, doesn't make any sense. I think it's hypocritical because she's paying her lawyer to represent her business manager and her other family law attorney, both who were ordered to produce documents. And I think that he has a conflict by doing that and he's created one for her. And it's highly unusual for the target's lawyer to represent all the witnesses. Um, I don't tell her what she can do. Um, I don't think she, it's, it's also ironic that someone that has 2.3 million Instagram followers and 432,000 Twitter followers is worried about what little old me says on my account. I find that ironic when she goes on TV every week and talks about the case, talks about her positions, uses one profane tweet after another, and now she's worried about what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense. Like she should say what she wants. If she attacks me or my client, we'll defend it. And that's the end of it. Uh, um, and, um, that's it. Yeah. I mean, 100% agree. Why do you think that she is so threatened by you then? Because it, it, it looks like, well, that, I mean, yeah, to me, I, mean I, th I think she I, wants to cause this. I think someone advised her. It'll disrupt the trustees legal team. If she has to start all over and vet a new special counsel, um, she knows that I, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of resources, meaning that I'll spend the money it takes to do the investigation. We're talking, you know, $100,000 of investigative costs. Not every lawyer wants to do that or will do that. So I think that she's worried that I'm going to find stuff. She knows I'm getting close on the issues of who's paying for all this. So I get it. She'd rather have someone less tenacious. I, I respect that, but not in the way she's doing it and trying to pretend that me posting stuff on Twitter, uh, you, you know, violates any rules. And then last week her lawyer filed a, a completely meritless uh, uh, reply where he tried to bring in new evidence, which is against the rules and say that by me responding to her tweets, I'm violating what's called the contact rule, even though he doesn't know Twitter and Erica doesn't have a direct message button on her Twitter page. So how could anybody contact her directly? It's laughable, but he doesn't, he's not a Twitter guy. I, someone in his office keeps getting him into trouble by having him try to talk about Twitter when he doesn't know anything about Twitter. He was born right before the Twitter era. Yeah. And yeah. Um, why? Um, okay. So one of the big things out there also for everyone is that the fact that Erica hasn't really said anything or talk about you know the victims or the case it's the case itself and all there are people out there who think that oh maybe her lawyers are telling her to not say anything um why do you think in your like lawyer opinion professional opinion that erica hasn't say anything like it, it will make sense to you if if you were her lawyer to be like don't talk don't say anything just keep quiet but then, you know, do whatever she does on Twitter? Well, I don't think her lawyer is telling her anything about Twitter. She's just probably doing whatever she wants, but she's not really capable of talking about the facts of the case because okay. it requires a lot of accounting that she didn't participate in and there are mm -hmm. complex legal issues. I, I don't think she has the capacity to talk about the facts of the case. It's too much. Um, she does have the capacity to call people names and invectives and use bad language. But, you know, that's part of her shtick. That's why uh, she's a popular housewife because she's kind of rough. So like, if I'm just trying to understand like her on this, like if you were her lawyer, like let's say, okay, she cannot, she cannot talk about like accounting and all those things, but like, would you recommend her to at least go out there and like say, hey, I acknowledge the victims, I acknowledge what 
Tom has been doing, like, you know, like try to put another face out there or, or she should just- A hundred percent. I would have I would have held a conference with her and had her put out a statement that she thinks her soon to be ex husband is an animal and what he did to his clients is irreprehensible and despicable. Absolutely, I would have done that, but um, she's chosen not to do that, and that's why I've commented on it. Her tweets were tone deaf. I, I said before I got retained on uh, by the trustee on this narrow matter to look at her assets and that's a fair criticism i'm not the only one that says that i mean uh she just acts like nothing's really happened um and that's her choice i mean what is she supposed to say at the end of the day she spent a lot of that money there's no question about that the two planes the lavish lifestyle the glam squad it's well, all yeah. been spent by her she didn't what she wasn't living there for free I know. And do you think they show like, uh, uh, you know, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, do you think that she she should be keep doing that or is the show hurting her more? The, the show was shot last year. Um, I'm not going to get into what she makes on the show, but that's a good source of income for her. Um, not it does, you don't make, you know, tens of millions of dollars being on that show but the show pays the bills for sure. And it was already shot. She has no right to stop the show. So she couldn't even if she wanted to, you sign your life away from being on the show. And look, Tom's not supporting her anymore. She needs to make money. And uh, I think that if someone's willing to pay her to be rude to other women that don't live in Beverly Hills like her, then I think she should take advantage of that. That won't last forever exactly i know okay so i think that's pretty much clear with erica jane like and my other question will be where are we with the tom Girardi case like what 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 is going on or what is the latest happening with with him well he's desperately trying to sell the house um the the, the trustee in that bankruptcy which i'm not involved in is trying to sell the house um and uh there's uh, they're trying to take some more uh, direct examinations of Erica um, in a debtor's exam that they got permission from the court. And they're trying to put together whatever real assets they can get from him personally. I mean, unfortunately, it looks like that house is going to yield very little when it's all said and done. I mean, I suggested that we buy the house get him out and then give the trustee six months to buy it back. I think it's hard to sell with him living in the house. That's my opinion that we should, he should get out of the house. So he right now claims that he has Alzheimer and early dementia. Um, I mean, this is kind of obvious, but I think, I mean, all of that, it's just in case something really goes down, he will not end up going to jail. Right. Correct. I think that this is one of the greatest defenses I've ever seen where you're about to be held in contempt. I have a bunch of evidence that he's talking, trying to talk to people, um, including his family members, um, right before he's going to be held in contempt. And then for the first time in that hearing, a criminal defense attorney throws out, hey, he may be suffering from dementia. Then his brother puts a conservator on him. The judge does a temporary, then a, a permanent, and now he's living in a, I guess, a $10 million house now uh, uh, due to the current listing price without any suffering, any detriment. To me, that just doesn't sound right. There's something wrong with the system. Uh, I've never seen a guy in a fraud case uh, do that, um, but uh, this is where we're at. And so I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to get around. It, it stopped his state bar proceedings. So I don't see how they're going to get around the fact that he's been held by a state court to have no capacity. Um, people that have a conservator don't have to testify in court. Yeah, I think, I mean, there is no doubt that we're dealing here with one of the biggest lawyers, you know, so he probably knows the system inside out and have like a million contacts. 
do you think that he will be able to get away with it? Well, that's why I want him out of the house. Let's see if he's going to live in senior assisted living with, you know, 12 people on a floor in gurneys. Then we'll know if it's legit because I think that he's not going to do that. That's too much. That's like going to jail almost living in like a, you know, some structured environment with a bunch of people like that. I think it's not obviously not the same as jail, but he needs to be made uncomfortable. Why does he get to sit in luxury where he has dinner brought to him every day? He gets to stay by himself. He can work the phones all day. It doesn't make any sense. Who, who, who gets away with that? Right. Yeah. And I don't like that. If something like, let's say something happened to him or he is actually sick or whatever. My, my other question that a lot of people are asked all the time is, um, is at some point, like, will Erica get, I mean, is she going to have to take care of everything that is going on at some point? Or is she, as soon as they divorce, she will just, she can just walk away from the whole man. No, she has joint liabilities with him. Uh, she, she can't walk away from anything. She's going to have to deal with it. I mean, she was married to him. That's why I don't understand. You know, uh, if you're married to someone, you have a certain level of responsibility. It's not like the entire marriage. She was publicly saying, I don't know what's going on at the store, mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden everyone wants to pretend it's all Tom's fault. Well, it may be, it may not be. We, we will have to, all of us will be the judge at some point, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and do you think that, um, because, so with Erica Jane, I mean, Erica Gerardo, I'm sorry. I mean, we, uh, she's under investigation. Is that some, is that investigation, like whatever happened there, could land her on jail or, or that's not a thing that is going to happen to her? I have no idea. Um, if, if, if there's a criminal investigation on her personally, uh, mm -hmm. to me, I, I think her civil liability is much easier to capture. I don't think there's any evidence that she knowingly took other people's money that she was what's called a fiduciary for. She may have just received other people's money. So that's a, that's a big, that's a big difference. And I don't, I, I, I don't really see, I haven't seen anything that would warrant that type of discussion. I really don't. I think that she received a lot of money. She's spending a lot of money and um, she's going to have to make a deal to end her civil liability. She has a limited pot of assets and I think that's it. I mean, I think honestly, the main message to Erica is just collaborate, you know, just do what it needs to be done to clear your name because she, I, I feel like she is dragging herself at the end of the day. I I don't think she's trying to clear her name right now. Uh, like, like I would clear it or you would clear it, but maybe there's reasons for the way she's proceeding. I mean, a lot of it, a lot of her problems started because her first lawyer never communicated with me that well. You know, there was no, the, the, he wasn't moving with alacrity. And then you saw him try to with, withdraw. And then he got back into the case and he was terminated. Her second lawyer does respond to me very quickly. So she's getting excellent representation and that's helping move this forward. But he's also slowing it down in other ways and trying to create roadblocks to the trustee by objecting on certain settlements that he doesn't know a lot about. Um, it seems to me that he's being influenced in some degree by uh, other people that are giving Erica advice and that's okay. It, you know, the client's allowed to have advisors, but at the end of the day, I'm dealing with a very professional attorney that we're trying to do what's best for both our clients in a professional manner. And there's absolutely zero uh, animosity and the utmost respect for one another. Okay, cool. And uh, uh, like a uh, last question, um, everyone knows you because I mean, you go public, you go out there, but are you the only lawyer that is let's say behind her or it's, or there are more lawyers involved in all of this. Yes. I have a team of lawyers on two coasts that are working with me on this case. Um, 
but there's there's the expression we don't have too many cooks in the kitchen so i handled the public statements but uh andy i got 80 cases to to, to represent people on 80 80 wow. you know how many files that is wow. so um i can't spend my whole life working on a, a, a contingency case for erica jane uh and maybe i'll get some money or maybe i won't i mean it's laughable i have 80 files so um i i need to uh have other people help me work up the different things here i have uh two good bankruptcy lawyers working on this two civil litigators and i have lawyers uh in the new york new jersey area working on this for stuff that we need um and we have to take anything in new york you know we may start going after bravo soon and getting some of their footage and other records from them so that's going to be a whole fun public spectacle when we have to you know basically get andy and the gang involved um maybe we'll he'll just have me on the show and we'll do it on tv uh i mean that will be great <laughs> for, yeah. everyone, for everyone um look i i just i just think that i i mean i have to applaud you and think that the the work that you're doing is amazing you know like i said you have arguments for everything you have your sources you have uh uh, document like the whole thing and I think you're doing a great great job and she she cannot scare you away I I mean I feel that that's not a possibility anymore and um, yeah I think honestly thank you very much for all the job that all the work that you're doing on, on this case oh well you're welcome and thank you for always being funny and interesting and a, a lot of energy and for you know people don't realize we're in a whole new era someone like you who's we're running around town can do these videos in a car in their house and you're like bringing out the message to people and you're not being barricaded by a big media company you're not being filtered you're not being censored and i mean isn't it a great state of affairs we're in in jli of 2021 we're all over the world. You have governments telling the average citizen they can't speak. They block their videos about what's going on. But here in America, you know, the real Andy of Beverly Hills could say what he wants, could get the message out, could bring people on his channel, and no one's telling him no. I mean, what a great place we live in, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's worth defending. Yeah. And, and even when a fellow citizen like Erica, Girardi wants to silence me and have a censored sort of lifestyle and legal system and public debate. I'm not going to stand for it. I believe I, I always do what I think is right. And I don't see how talking about a case that I'm involved in truthfully in any way violates anybody's rights. I think that we there's an open access to the courts. There's a presumption that everything that occurs in the court is public record and knowledge. And um, it's very hard to have secret court proceedings in the United States. So the extension of that is the lawyers are allowed to talk about the things they file and the things that are publicly said. And they're allowed to respond to people that create adverse publicity about their clients. And that's all I've done here. I know the rules. I've represented lawyers in ethical hearings i've testified for discipline uh organizations as a witness and i understand what it's all about and i know and i don't think i've come anywhere close to violating any rules especially the case where the judge said he's not going to censor what they're going to say about this case and there's no gag order so if that all changes i'll follow the judge's rules but i i don't see why i have to be intimidated by threats of I did something wrong to try to silence me. To me, that warrants when the First Amendment is under attack, it actually warrants more comments and more resistance. So you don't get pushed around and chilled. And so that's why I haven't stopped talking about it, because I feel that it's wrong to try to silence your critics through intimidation through the legal system. And I'm not gonna do it. And, and, and maybe she thought, oh, I'll be afraid if I lose my appointment. 
Well, I don't want to lose it. I'm not trying to lose it, but I rather, if I have to choose between the First Amendment and what's fair and right versus a job, I'll take the First Amendment at any time because that's never going to stop me. I can keep going on. That's what's so funny is they'll just be another lawyer. I'll, I'll still keep tweeting. In fact, probably tweet a lot more because I'll have no connection to the case. And uh, I'm still in a lawsuit with Erica Jane. So the whole thing makes no sense to me. So hopefully she'll trust that I want to clear her. And that's my number one goal. And if not, settle with her. And if only as a last resort, do I want to be in a trial with her? That's my last resort. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she has she has the I think she has the answers on her hands and she just needs better. Right. Advice. She's yes. holding the key. She is holding the key, Andy. All she needs to do is show the cards. And this case will be concluded. All right. Perfect. All, All right. right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come here. Uh, I mean, thank you. you know, I, I, I hope we can do this again when like more things happen in the future. Um, for everyone out there, if you are not following Ronald Richards, you can go on his Twitter right now. It's at Ronald Richards on Twitter. And um, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Andy. I look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Have and a for great watching day. your broadcast.